Greetings, everybody, and a fine how do you do? Uh, I have the uh, first three appearances of Dark Side to show you here, and something curious about uh, one of them that I have graded because the label is completely wrong on it, on uh, the description on the label itself. But uh, before I get into that, um, I want to give a big welcome back to my very good buddy and my close personal friend, uh, Scott. His channel is Coast and Brown Star. And he's been on a hiatus here from YouTube for about a year or so. And uh, he's finally returning after I threatened to torture the family jewels. Just kidding, kidding, Scott. Um, but, you know, uh, Scott, he was around uh, YouTube here. I think he, I don't know when he first joined. I think he might have joined in 2007, but he didn't upload his first video until uh, July of 2009. And then after I seen that, his first video, uh, about three weeks later, I joined YouTube in August, and then about four months after Scott uploaded his first video, I uploaded my first video. We're part of the old, you know, school comic book collectors that, you know, we uh, enjoy the camaraderie, you know, we get together for the, uh, uh, to discuss comics because it's something that we really love and we really enjoy you know and we've enjoyed it for a you know a large part of our lives and we don't look at it more for the monetary value i mean that's you know always part of it because that's just the nature of the business you know and the nature of collecting you know things are going to increase in value whether or even decrease in value whether uh, you like it or not so we just accept that part of it but it's more for the how do I say this, for the uh, intrinsic value that we, you know, love and collect comic books. That's what I mean by old school, by intrinsic value. I mean, you know, for what the, the real value of the book is, and that's, you know, the story, the art. We follow it because of our favorite, you know, creators, the, the artists and writers. We love the comics because of the great, uh, uh, the history behind it, the, uh, the eras of, you know, the Golden Age, Silver Age, and all the artists responsible for, for you know, creating that age, the writers. Um, so I'm really, you know, happy and excited that he's back. And I know that uh, I, I was talking to Scott the other day by phone, and, uh, you know, I know that uh, Mark, uh, uh, the ghost critic, our good buddy Mark, the ghost critic, is pretty excited about it, too. And uh, so I just want to tell you that, everybody, if you get an opportunity, I'm going to leave the link to his channel in the description box. He's starting all over now with a new, uh, he's keeping the same name, but he's starting a new channel. And he's, uh, well, he's getting ready to, I think, to upload his uh, first new video as I speak, maybe, you know, the next day or two or whatever, I think he's going to be uh, uh, posting a vid, so I hope that everybody, you know, uh, takes the time and uh, checks out the link and, and subscribes to him, because uh, we're going to, I got a feeling we're going to put fun back into the YouTube comic book community. Um, now... Let me uh, just talk real quickly about, uh, show you the uh, the first appearance of Dark Side here. This is a, a CGC graded book. It's Jimmy Olsen, uh, 134, I think it's 71, is it? No, 1970. December 1970, so it's almost 1971. Uh, 134, this is the first appearance of Darkseid in Cameo. I don't know if you can see that on the label up there. 
maybe I can show it to you. Like it's pretty hard, you know, if my face gets in there, it doesn't focus properly. But there, I think. First appearance, dark side in cameo on the last page. Now that's the uh, first appearance, and I'm sorry for the glare. Damn it, man! You know these uh, plastic covers. I just you can't. I can't do anything with the lighting. I haven't figured that out yet. But I'm always tired. Right now, I'm fighting with the volume on this darn thing. You know, I, everybody. You know, a lot of people complain that the uh, the music got too loud. You know, and uh, I felt like I was talking. It felt like I was talking over the music. So I. I cut that out for now until I get a, you know, a real good uh, grip on how to do that. But anyway, uh, here is the second appearance of Dark Side. This is Jimmy Oates from 135, and this is from 1971. Obviously, it would have to be. But this is his second appearance in cameo. That means, you know, one or one or two panels and it's a pretty nice copy I got another I have a few other more copies of this as well but I think this is the I think this might be my highest grade copy no it's not my highest grade copy I have a higher grade copy than this but at any rate so that's the uh, second appearance of uh, dark side Oh hell, this is not this one I can take out of the uh mylar and there you won't have to see the glare. Should have did that right away on this one, but there it is. And the covers are by Neil Adams. The interior art is by Jack Kirby. And that's kind of the reason why <clears throat> I actually chose to show you these. That's one of the reasons why I chose to show you these, because Scott Austin Bromstar is a huge Jack Kirby fan. So this is kind of an honor of uh, <laughs> Scott coming back to YouTube. Um, now, here's the thing. Those two were the first and second appearances of Dark Side in cameo. Now, this, the Forever People number one, let me take it out of my mind. This is the third overall appearance of dark side and the first full appearance of dark side it's also the first appearance of the forever people jack kirby cover jack kirby interiors and i wonder hold on here yes Oh shit, yeah, it was uh, also, it's even edited by Jack Kirby, and you know, of course written by Jack Kirby as well. I mean, the man was just a super, he was the real Superman. So, as I said, this is the third overall appearance of Dark Side, and the first full appearance of Dark Side. Now... I have this, I haven't contacted these people yet, but I am. This is CBCS graded. The uh, comic book uh, certification service. It's uh, run by, I think, Steve uh, Borak, the same guy that actually was instrumental in forming CGC originally. He's now the head honcho behind this uh, grading company and for which I had high hopes for but take a look at the uh, 
the description up here if I can I hope that I can uh, get it close enough so that it can focus let me see maybe I can come up here and show it Now, I don't know if you're able to see that or not there, but what it says, and this is a certifi certification company, professional company, they say it's the first appearance of the Forever People, which is true. It's the second appearance of Dark Side and Cameo. The second appearance of Dark Side and Cameo, the second appearance of Dark Side and Cameo was Jimmy Olsen. 135. How can they make a mistake like that? How can they make a mistake and say that this is a cameo appearance? It's a full appearance of Dark Side in this issue. So now the whole thing's got to go back. And I don't know, who knows how many labels like this they've already done and how many times, how many uh, uh, copies of Forever People Number One that they graded. And, you know, Put that wrong information on there. I mean, that, that's awful. When you think of it, that's that's horrible. Especially it's horrible for people that are having this stuff graded because they want to sell it or put it on heritage auctions or whatever, and they got the wrong information on there. That's just totally ridiculous. I mean, there's no excuse for that. Even the Overstreet Price Guide, I don't have it here, but I'm sure the Over... Or do I? No. I don't know what I, where I put it, but the Overstreet Price Guide has the same information in there. That's the third overall appearance and the first full appearance of Dark Side. So I'd like to find out where they got their information from and how many, how many of these false labels are already out there on these books. It's just absurd, man. Well, you know, I don't know. Who wants to go through something like that? You know, you have stuff... Either you have stuff graded or you buy it. It's already graded and you have to put up with wrong information on the label and then you got to send it back. And, you know, they're, I'm sure they're not going to pay the, the postage for, for me to send it there and for them to send it back to me. They're, they're not going to cover all that. It's going to cost me money. It's going to cost me time to go to the post office. It's going to cost me time and money to, to package it, to, to ship it. It's just absurd, unless I go to the uh, the C2E2 convention, which, I, well, actually, I am going there. I don't know if they're going to be there or not, but maybe I'll take it with me over there to the uh, McCormick place where they're having the, uh, the big convention, C2E2. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, speaking of the C2E2, if anybody's going over there, they should hit me up, and maybe I can uh, hook up with some people over there. But at any rate... Um, you know, I, it, I don't know. It's just absurd, man. I'm, I was surprised that this happened. You know, it's not like, I mean, they are a newer grading company, but they're run by the same guy that was instrumental in creating the CGC grading service. If he's supposed to be overseeing all the books that, or most of the books that get graded, then this is a this is a big boo boo on his part. I mean, I don't I don't know. But there you have that. There you have the first, second, and third appearance of Dark Side. And 
I think I got another copy of the first appearance of Dark Side, but it's uh do I have it here? It's a reader. It's a reader copy. Yeah. I do. Uh that's another copy, but you can see why it's a reader copy. The logo is missing. And the reason that whole logo is missing, I mentioned this before, and most of you people probably know it already anyway. Back in the day when these were going to the uh, newsstands and uh, mom and pop shops, whatever didn't sell, they would get their money back. They didn't have to return the whole book. All they had to do was return the logo to the company, to DC, and they would uh, get reimbursed for the unsold copies. And what naturally what every store would do, they would keep these and sell them, you know, for half the price, you know, for a nickel. They'd still keep them and sell them. Not that, and they weren't supposed to do that, but they did. They were actually supposed to uh, destroy them. You know, they were supposed to throw them in the garbage or whatever. But, you know, maybe some stores did. But, you know, the vast majority, 80, 90 percent of them, you know, kept the books and then sold them at half price. I used to buy a lot of these books when I was a kid for a nickel with the logo missing and stuff. But uh, that is that. And yeah, this is cause for celebration. My good buddy, my personal friend Scott, Costum Brown Star, is back on the tube. Ooh. The champagne of bottled beers. Uh, let's see, what else should I... Oh, look at this. I forgot. I'm sure this is the second issue of the uh, Forever People. I bought these originally when they first, these are my original copies that I bought. Pretty nice. Still a nice uh, high grade, pretty much. Well, yeah, it is high grade. You know, probably 8.0 or maybe uh, 8.5. Uh, Number two, May 1971. But, you know, it's got these damn floating heads that <laughs> I just... <laughs> We've talked about this a few times, you know. No, I don't know. Uh, I don't... I'm, I think that... Uh... uh Oddfellow Thoughts, you know, he he didn't like the floating heads either. And then for, I think, a couple of years ago or three years, I can't remember how long ago it was, but that was always something that we would talk about and kind of laugh about, the floating head thing on the comic books. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's number two. Travis Oddfellow Thoughts, yeah, they, he was one of the guys we'd always get together and have some hangouts, you know, with Scott and uh, other people. The Ghost Critic, um, Mark the Ghost Critic. Uh, oh, one more thing before I, I go, I want to find out what I did with that stuff. I want to show you the, uh, the previews, what I got for this month. Hold on here. <laughs> okay. This is the uh, previews for this month. For March. And uh, this is curious. It comes with uh, four collector cards for that uh, comic book series. 4,001. 4, AD. Yeah. 
by is that by Titan Comics? No, it's by Valiant. I don't collect any of the Valiant comics, but uh, and here's the flip side to that. The reason I'm, you know, just showing you this, you know, most it's a great, you know, catalog of all the upcoming uh, comics that are going to be coming out and all other all, all sorts of pop culture stuff, action figures, books, and uh, games, and trading cards, even clothes. Uh, but I don't know if anybody else got all this, but here's all the supplements that I got with the previews for this month. The owner of uh, the, my main comic book store where I go to is a friend of mine, you know, and he's always uh, giving me a lot of the stuff that they get, that retailers get. But I think this is a lot of the stuff that uh, they were given to... Uh, they were given to the customers as well. Um, here's the uh, Marvel previews that comes, you know, as a supplement with the big previews. Then we have Titan Comics. Penny Dreadful. I can't wait for that TV series to come out. I mean. So this has uh, you know, their own, they put out all the Doctor Who stuff and uh, they got their own little short previews of the upcoming comic books that are going to be coming out. So I got that and I got a special, wait a second now, this is a uh, you know what this is? This is actually a preview of the comic of the comics themselves. They're showing short, you know, previews of the actual comics, story and art from Marvel uh, Comics, The Invincible Iron Man number six. Let's see here. Uh, Here's uh, Squadron Supreme number six, and then here's some of the uh, preview of the story and art. Spider-Man number nine. So this is actually giving you a glimpse into the actual comics themselves, story and art. And then we have this is the regular Marvel previews that comes as a supplement that lists, you know, everything that Marvel is coming out with in two months from now. Then we have Aftershock 2016 uh, retailer preview. So this is uh, pretty interesting. You know, from Aftershock, I collect the... Uh, Insects, and I am going to be picking up uh, B.E.K., which is Black Eyed Kids. Not Black Eyed Peas, Black Eyed Kids. Oh, here's something interesting, too. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be picking this up, though. This is by uh, the team of Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmietti, who uh, do, you know, Harlequin. He is going to be doing. I'm sorry, hold on. Super Zero. It looks like kind of a Harlequin character, this uh, Super Zero. But I'm not sure. I don't know. That's just a wild guess. <laughs> Second Sight. Oh, here's uh, B.E.K. Black Eyed Kids. It may be kind of a, yeah, 
they describe it as the uh, when the twins from the shining had a playmate had a play date with the children of the corn kind of like a kind of like village of the dams you know village of the dams oh and here's dc has a supplement for this uh month's big catalog a preview showcase dc collectible showcase which is basically all the different action figures that they're going to be coming out with i just thought that i'd share that with you and this of course is the uh if you order as much as i do you'll get one of these or you can ask your retailer to get get you one of these this is a, the previews long form water form it has every company in it everything what they're coming out with and uh a checklist of everything that you want to order the prices and so forth so i get all that stuff but i was surprised when i got you know, one, two, three, four, five. Besides the actual order form and the previous catalog, I was surprised to get five, well, and the uh, Marvel previews. I was surprised to get four additional supplements. So that's pretty interesting. I must mean the... Uh, they must be starting their year a little bit uh, later. <laughs> Good Lord of mercy. Well, okay. Well, this is probably the shortest video I ever uploaded. Oh, maybe not. Holy crap. And we elapsed time. It already says 27 minutes. Wow. Well, anyway, time goes fast when you're having fun. And I'm having more fun now that I know that my good buddy Scott is coming back. So very, very cool. Check out his channel, please, and give him a subscription. You will not be disappointed. And you'll really enjoy his... Uh, how do I describe it? His un unusual, bizarre sense of humor. <clears throat> okay, I said enough. So, thanks everybody for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care. God bless you, Scotty.